and welcome to another video on Spot On with Shruti. Have you ever played the jigsaw puzzle game wherein we put different pieces in different shapes and sizes to make one big shape? We all have, right? Now, what if I asked you, have you done polynomial expansions using a foiling technique? And do you know when we're using a foiling technique, we actually are finding an area of a square and it is also related to the idea of how a jigsaw puzzle is made? Well, <laughs> let me clarify. I am talking about a visual proof of formulas like a plus b times a plus b and a minus b times a minus b, wherein we actually utilize nothing but areas of a square or a rectangle or a combination of both. How about you stay along and find out what this visual proof is actually going to be about? All right, see you around. All right, let's get started with our visual proof. As you can see on the screen, I have written the formula for a plus b times a plus b. So usually what we do is foil this, like we go a times a, then we go a times b, b times a again, and b times b, and come up with the expansion, which results in a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Now this is also a formula oftentimes utilized in polynomial factorizing. But what I'm talking about is a jigsaw puzzle. So let's go ahead and see what this is about. So what I'm gonna do is, as you can see, I have these, I have one big square, which I have broken into four small squares and rectangles. And we're going to decompose this big square and add the areas of all the small squares and rectangles to see if we get the same area. So let's see. So you see the black dots that I have made. Now let's say this is of the length B and the remainder is of the length a so the total length here becomes a plus b right a plus b okay so let's go ahead <coughs> and what i'm talking about is if we separate these squares you see that what i'm trying to say now is if this whole area of the big square what is the area of the big square that is going to be a plus b times a plus b. And if we are to break down each of the sides that we have taken and figure out the side lengths for each of them, so this is going to be a square of side length b. So I'm going to number the green one as 1. This is 2, this is 3, and this is 4. The big one is 4. So the side length for the small one is going to be B units. Let's see the number two now. Number two, one side length we have is A, which is here, and the other one is going to be B. What about the one in pink right here? This is going to be, we have this as if this is B and this is A, so this is going to be A, and this is also going to be A. What about the number three? Again, this is A and this is B. So we have an A and a B. So would it be correct for us to say that the area of the big square, which is a plus b times a plus b, should be the combination of the areas of each of these shapes, one, two, three, and four, right? So let's go ahead. If we added all these shapes together, areas meaning, what do we get? So for the green one, it's going to be a plus b times a plus b is the area of the big square, and the area of one is going to be b times b plus area of square or rectangle two is going to be a times b, which is two. Area of the third one is going to be a times b again, and area of the fourth one. Now again, we are adding the areas of all the four different smaller shapes. The area of the fourth shape is going to be a times a, which results in b squared plus ab plus ab, plus a squared, which is nothing but a squared plus two times ab plus b squared. That is the formula, isn't it? So this is the visual proof. Isn't it like a jigsaw puzzle? Let's do another one that I have ready for you. We have another formula uh, of a minus b times a minus b. And if you foil it, you can see on the screen, I've written it already. This is what we will get, a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Now let's use our jigsaw puzzle. Again, we're, for this, we're going to consider a big square of side length a. And we're going to decompose 
or disintegrate this big square into three small shapes of squares and rectangles, which I've already done on the screen, as you can see. And so the idea again is the area of the big square should be equal to the summation of the areas of these rectangles and squares, right? So what is the area of the big square? A squared, A times A, if it's a side length of A. So as you can see, let's separate these pieces. And now I have one, two, three. Let me go ahead and erase that written out there so we know what we're talking about so this is one this is two three so if we add the areas of each of these shapes we should get the area of the big square right so what is that you're looking for area of the big square is a times a and area of one rectangle one this is going to be side length a so it is going to be a times b area of two this is going to be a minus b a minus b with b plus for two it is going to be a minus b times b and here we get a square in number three with the side length of a minus b and a minus b which is exactly the formula that we're trying to figure out okay so now if you expand it we get a squared equal to a b plus a b minus b squared and i'm going to leave a minus b times a minus b as is and if we rearrange the equation we get a minus b times a minus b equal to a squared plus we add these two like terms to a b minus b squared and voila that's your formula right there so you see exactly what it is and what it means when we figure out uh, polynomial expansions using a foiling technique. It's nothing but areas of squares and rectangles, like a jigsaw puzzle. So hopefully you found this visual proof helpful and interesting, and it will help you understand why we learn these expansion foiling techniques and what it means. If you want to know more or you want some sessions, my information has, of course, been provided for your reference. So please be sure to connect with me and let me know if you want some classes with me. All right. Bye-bye. See you on the next one.